Uh, my name is Lenia McCree. I'm with the Fiscal Research Division, and I'm just going to provide a brief overview of um, educator and community college faculty pay. I'm not going to get into uh, principles. I'll let Alexis handle that.
while the person who was on step three in 08 or 09 had become a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight by then. And their pay, their pay had stayed at 32.64. And the person who was now on step three was getting paid 38. So um, you can see also what the pay is in um, 2015-16 for um, the, the equivalent steps now. So you can see the new schedule that was put into place <coughs> in 14-15 and increased again in 15-16 uh, is higher than what any of those teachers would have made in 8-9 and in 13-14. So another reason that average pay could decline is because of changes in the distribution of teachers along the pay scale. This gets at some of the conversation that you were having yesterday about whether we're having a hard time recruiting teachers or retaining teachers or we have some problem with everyone at 10 years leaving. This is some national data on U.S. public school teachers taken from um, Education Policy Center that shows the distribution of teachers by year, um, every four years. You can see here that we have fewer newer teachers nationally according to their data. This only goes through 11, 12. Uh, I don't have updates, updated information since that time. Um, in North Carolina, I, I did a similar chart for how experienced are North Carolina teachers. And you can see I've shown every four years and then the last then two years for the last um, since 2001 to 12 and you can see we have a similar trend of a decreasing number of beginning teachers having 19% of our teaching population and again I've used the same categories they use just so you could compare it to the national data zero to three years uh, being over 19% in 1999 and being under 15% in 2015-16. Um, of course, these numbers change every day as teachers move in and out, but not significantly. You can see that the changes are not um, dramatic, but we do have a decline in the high end of the schedule, of people with over 20 years of experience, and a decline at the lower end. So we've become more concentrated in the middle um, of it. I don't know if these changes are statistically significant or not, but uh, this is the information from teacher by step. So um, what about 2014-15 and 15-16? There are no NEA rankings for those years available um, at this time. DPI does produce an average salary and their highlights every year. If you've not been to their highlights document, it's very informative and it's a really um, useful document. I, I would suggest you go look through it. Um, according to DPI, the average salary in 14-15 was $47,783. And this is a 6.2% increase over NEA's 2013-14 estimate, which was uh, $44,990. So if no other state, using the rankings from 13-14, if no other state made any changes to their salary, which is probably not a good assumption given that we saw in the first table of this presentation that during the year North Carolina declined, every other state's pay increased. But if, we, if those states made no changes, and we assumed our average salary was 47,783, North Carolina would rank 39th in the U.S. I'm not saying by any means we will rank 39th in the U.S. when the NEA rankings come up. Uh, but the 15, 16 average salaries are not yet available. So a couple of just thoughts on why rankings are a challenging tool to use in um, setting teacher salaries is the average salaries are self-reported and often are estimated by NEA. If you go to the NEA rankings, look for any state that has an asterisk next to it. Maybe half of them have asterisks next to them. And those are states where NEA has estimated what the average salary for the state is. You can see here, of course, it has another asterisk, but that's referring to the footnote at the bottom of the page, what North Carolina includes in our estimate of average uh, teacher compensation. This again is from DCAS highlights. You can see how they break down and all of the components that go into estimating the average salary. This year, for example, the bonus that you gave to all educators will be included in average salary. So automatically, if nothing else changed between 15, 16, and 16, 17, if you did not give that bonus again, North Carolina's average salary would drop. So because bonus, if you see about halfway down the box, is one of the factors that's included in estimating average pay. So we don't know how other states exactly estimate their average pay if they include the same components. So we can't guarantee that the rankings compare apples to apples. They're as close as we can get, but there's a caveat on any of those, um, any of those estimates. 
also, like we talked about earlier, there are things beyond the General Assembly's control that have an effect on average salaries, the distribution of educators, the local supplements, and other factors such as, um, you know, going into the average salary is if a, if a teacher is a coach because they get a supplement for um, being a coach or mentoring. So there are other supplements from locals and duty pay that go into average salary that are beyond your control as a legislature. Also, the um, rankings have limited utility in developing policy. There's recent um, research suggests that there's very little movement of teachers between states. So Charlotte, yes, they may lose people to South Carolina, and uh, Vance may lose people to Virginia, but most of the movement is within the state. And so where we rank amongst the states, even the southern states, may not be as relevant to your setting of salaries as interstate, interstate uh, dis disparities or concerns. You heard a lot about that yesterday with how difficult it may be to recruit someone to uh, how easy it is to get someone to move to Wake as compared to Passport Tank. I don't know what Passport Tank It's just my favorite word to say. <laughs> so a couple of cost scenarios on teachers. A 1% increase in teacher pay costs about $54 million. This is an old estimate from uh, December 2014. We'll be getting new estimates from DPI um, here shortly. But if every 1% costs $54 million, and our average salary is 47783 If you wanted to get to Georgia's average salary two years ago, it would cost you about $567 million. And at that point, we would still rank, I think Georgia was 24th um, on the list. I, um, Georgia, was. Georgia was 24th on the list of 1314. Uh, but then, of course, that would assume that no other state made any changes. If you wanted to get the highest in the entire United States, you'd be looking at about $3.2 billion. Um, <coughs> and like you heard a lot yesterday, I was putting on my side, if you do increase pay, you have to figure out how you want to do it. Do you want to give it a cross the board increase? Do you want to focus on recruitment and maybe increase starting pay? Do you want to focus on retention? Maybe you have different um, places where you want to increase. So you have to think about what your goals are in increasing pay. And then once you figure out what that goal is, how would you want to distribute the increase across the salary schedule to achieve that goal? Um, that's the start, end of my teachers. Oh, okay. Do you want me to go through community colleges? We're not let's, about let's, uh, let's take a uh, intermission here and uh, we can do things a little differently than yesterday since we're dealing with numbers and more technical data. The members of the committee have questions that they would like to address to Lanier at this point. If you want to wait, that's fine. But if there's anybody got anything before we move on to her presentation on college? Uh, uh, Representative Bryan. Uh, I don't know if you looked at all at um, looking at this comparison thing, there's various factors that the number of young teachers one state has versus another. go on. Um, I had seen some stats at one point that talked about it. what you do with your class size and effectively the number of teachers in a state. Like we have data on how many teachers Georgia has and how many students they have. The same thing for North Carolina because obviously if you have a 1 to 15 student to teacher ratio in one state and a 1 to 16 student to teacher ratio in another state you're, you're probably, you may be well be paying less in the one to, one to 15 ratio because you have more teachers for your least, the amount of money you're spending to be adjusted. Do we have data on that? I don't have that data available. Um, but we, I'm sure that data is available somewhere. Um, I'm sure we can find, a, find it for you. We can, uh, we can look up that information for you. I mean, I know it changes a lot too because the number of students, one, one of the things that right. I noticed. It, I mean, North Carolina also has a very different funding model for our school systems than most states. So it's really also hard to compare the state's contribution for teacher salaries in North Carolina to other states because in North Carolina, the state puts in a lot more of teacher salaries than in most states. <coughs> Brian and Chris are the experts in those areas, so I um, will certainly get this data for you and I'll have them review your call and answer.
comment, and Lanier, you should correct me if I'm wrong, but just to do it nicely. Uh, one of the difficulties in trying to stay current on this information is because the different states pay so differently in terms of the proportion that's paid in by the state versus local property taxes and supplements. And I think that's the reason that the only source that we appear to have is the National Education Association. And they take a couple of years to collect the data, so you're, we're, we're getting ready to do the short-term budget adjustments, and we've got data on this, for example, is now two years out of date, so to speak, in terms of where we are uh, actually operating. But because of the difficulties of collecting all those little pieces and putting them together to calculate the average, we're waiting on NEA on that. But I do have a, a question for you, Lanier, that you may not have, and it may be that the staff could uh, uh, get back to us on. On your chart that talked about how experienced our NC teachers where you were comparing that with the national, uh, one of the things that we have talked about yesterday and that was talked about by the task force two years ago was uh, relating compensation and how it might be done to teacher effectiveness. I'm wondering if there is sort of an overlay that we could get on teacher effectiveness uh, ratings or data compared to teacher experience that is reflected in this chart. Do you know anything about that? Um, not specifically, but there, there, are, there are several recent studies that show uh, there's a lot of talk about how much effectiveness teachers gain in their first few years of experience as a teacher. But there have been several recent studies that suggest teachers continue to gain effectiveness later into their careers. And I uh, would be happy to forward some of the ones that um, Chris and I read lately on that topic to the committee if you'd be interested okay. or um, send you the summaries. Thank you. Uh, Representative Brian, just to follow up on that point, I believe Jake Bittner, when he was here from Duke, did have, there, there's some old graphs, now there may be some new studies as well, but there were some graphs he had showing exactly addressing your question. And we can keep that out associated with this. So quickly to review North Carolina Community College uh, faculty salaries. Uh, you're going to see the same slides. <coughs> Not very creative. The SREB states are the state, the South uh, Southern Regional Education Board. Uh, they're about eight, they're 18, they're 18 states in SREB. They're 18 states in SREB. Um, here again, I've shown you the surrounding states, the highest pay and the lowest pay. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a, a tighter bunch. Uh, and North Carolina average faculty salaries, according to SREB data, uh, have actually increased since 2007, eight through 13, 14. You'll notice this chart is missing a year. 2012-13 uh, is not in here. The community college system uh, indicated that there was a calculation error in the SREB data from 2012-13, and so I just removed, removed it from the numbers here. Um, but you can see the average pay of a community college faculty um, member is slightly higher than the average pay for a teacher in so you can see the calculation error there. I left 12, 13 in the graphic. But there was uh, something wrong in that estimate. Um, so just a graphically, a graphic representation of the average salaries for the surrounding states. And looking at faculty rankings in terms of salary, North Carolina ranks 11th out of those 18 SREB states. And you can see uh, Florida is, or, sorry, Virginia is the highest for our surrounding states. Legislative actions in the past, during that time period, well, since 910, uh, the pay freeze began in 910 and lasted through 1314, except for the 1.2% increase in 1213. The community college system has been given flexibility with those funds, so the legislature appropriated about $13.6 million to the community college system that was distributed to the um, 58 
community colleges in the state, and they were allowed to use those funds as they saw necessary. They did not have a 1.2% across the board increase, although about 93% of the funds were used for across the board increases in 12 13. In 14 15, there was a $1,000 across the board increase, and that was given to all of them. That cost $22.7 million. And then this year, there um, was 14, almost $15 million given to the community college system for the bonus, as well as $10 million in recurring funds uh, that could be used flexibly, and another $10 million in the next fiscal year. There's a report due on March 1, I believe, um, on how the community college system used the, those $10 million. So that information will be available. Uh, we may have an early version of your report uh, before your next meeting in case you'd like to see that. Um, other than that, a couple just quick cost scenarios as well for community college system. It costs about $7 million to give community college faculty a 1% salary increase. If you wanted to increase the salary to be comparable to Virginia, which is the highest of the surrounding states, it would cost $186 million. And um, to increase to Maryland, which is the highest of all the SREB states, it would cost about 200, uh, $212 to $213 million. Of course, again, that assumes no change in the Virginia or Maryland average salary since 2013. That, I'm happy to take any other questions. Uh, I have uh, one question to clarify, and then uh, Brett or Mark may be able to help us with this one here. On the, on, for you. on the $10 million that was given in the budget for the current year and for next year, to you to the use to be determined, my understanding is that that is not limited to use for faculty at the community college only, but it can be used for non-faculty in the discretion of the boards of trustees. Is that correct? So those funds are allowed to be used for all, all staff of um, the community college system at the discretion of the local boards. And in addition, while several of the pots of money were um, to be effective January 1, like the salary adjustment funds, effective January 1, so there was half the money in this year, uh, the full amount for the full year in 1617. There was no requirement that these be effective January 1. And so uh, anecdotally, uh, the system office says we'll probably have 50, 58 different ways of using the funds. And that she expects that most of them made the pay raises retroactive. So there will be a pot of money, maybe not a full 10 million, because if some of them didn't made the pay effective January 1, they'll be <coughs> additional funds next year to make those salaries annual. Um, but there may be some funds, some of that 10 million and 16, 17 that's not been earmarked for salaries. They could be could be more targeted. Uh, one, one other follow-up uh, that I think I'm right about, but correct me if I'm not. In the K-12 budget, typically the legislature, where it has given flexibility over funding to the LEAs, has restricted those funds so they can't be transferred into the central office. But there are no restrictions on this 10 million as to who can get a piece of that. Is that correct? The, the 10 million in the um, budget for the salaries, there, there's no restrictions. It, it gives a general, um, it, it's employees of the community college system and the pay increases can be for merit or longevity. It doesn't. It, it lists out some criteria that basically encompasses any salary increase that could be given, and you can go to anyone 